so when people plan, you know, people are living longer. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I read recently that the pers- first person who will live to 150 has probably been born. And the first person who will live to 200 will probably be born in the next 10 years, simply because of the fact of how much medicine is changing. Wow. I know. I have not heard any of that. It was on that, the internet. It could be well, a total lie. That but, it's you know, absolutely I read true it. if it's on the internet. Yeah. We know it's all true. They don't post anything. Uh, it, it was in post some post. scientific journal. It wasn't on LinkedIn? It was not on LinkedIn, oh, but no. it, was, it, was, it, was, um, it was a scientific yeah. journal yeah. that I can't yeah. remember, but I read it. Well, that's, nonetheless, people are living past 100. Yeah, absolutely. It's entirely possible. You know, the life insurance tables, you know, for, for expectance, life expectancy have now been revised up to 120 years from like 99 years. So that's, I mean, it, that is the trend. That is, that is the. Yeah. I mean, the, we're all going to be bionic, trend. but absolutely. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. I wouldn't mind that. Six million dollar man. You yeah. don't remember that. You're way too young for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> Everybody in here is too young for that. I will, I will me. laugh with you, though, John. I will laugh we with you. Watch Mutual of Omaha. <laughs> and, and Absolutely. <laughs> yep. There you go. Uh, well, okay. Let's. But when you start thinking about living longer, there's going to be financial needs. Right. Uh, and a lot Absolutely. of people have heard the term long term care. Maybe yep. explain exactly what that is yeah. and why people should be concerned about it. Right. Well, before I talk a little bit about what long term care is, uh, let's a little bit about longevity. I mentioned sure. in, in previous shows that uh, you know the, the new statistics are basically saying that if you're 65 years of age, you have a, a 50% or better chance of living to be 85 or older. And if you're under the age of 65, uh, the the odds of living longer go up. Now that's you know that's that's the good thing. That's that was the, good the article part right after the one I read. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now one of the things that was a recent study that just came out within the last couple of days was in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. It was a study that basically shows that in the coming years, 10 to 20 years, the the biggest medical problem that we will face is going to be dementia related issues, and that will eclipse cancer, that will eclipse you know heart disease, and all of those things that are major problems now. This will become the major major issue health wise uh, for for the United States, and so which is that's a scary <laughs> thought because it's I mean you need a lot of help if you're yeah demented so, exactly that is that is the that's the problem because your body can can go on and, and function quite well whereas your mind is not necessarily going to be there and you're going to need help and you're going to need care you're going to need assistance and the one thing that is sort of like an immutable truth in the universe is. All this stuff is going to hit at the absolute worst time, isn't that? Isn't that right? So once you've gotten a new job promotion or had a new baby, that's when your parents are all of a sudden going to need all of this additional help, mm-hmm. and you're going to be pulled in every every which way, and and you need to have a plan in place to know how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's kind of the, the main point I want to make is to to get in the you know get it taken care of on get the front ahead end. of it. Yeah, exactly. And and the cost is is extraordinary. I was just reading an article last night where there's a, a lady with two parents in in skilled nursing. The cost is over $200,000 a year for the two parents at at the same time. And with recently the last the last year or so, uh, the cost of long-term care has gone up Roughly 17%. That's well in excess of, of the rate of inflation. So the cost is going up. And, and when you say long-term care, I mean, you're, you're talking about you know, living in a home, uh, elder, old I, folks home, whatever. Could be, yeah. I mean, the way, I mean, it could be any number of different things. Um, basically, it's how you're going to care for a parent or how a parent is, or, or an older individual is going to be cared for. Is that going to be in the house? Is that you know at home? Mm-hmm. Uh, is that going to be with a child that's going to be caring for them, or is that going to be with um, with a professional that you pay to come into the house? If that's not possible, do they have to go uh, into a skilled nursing facility, an adult family home, and and what level of care do they do they need? And, and if you're talking, I mean, I said 150, you said 120. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Call it 120. If people's minds start going at 70 right. or 80 years old, mm-hmm. that is, I mean, that is an uncanny amount of time. Yes, absolutely. To need help. I mean, at, at some point you you start. It, it's a pretty. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. unfathomable almost. It, it really is. And if you think about it, um, most most people would plan for a couple of years of of this type of a problem and paying for it. Uh, but what happens if it's more than five years or ten years or something like that? If you're talking a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars a year, even if you're if you're relatively well off with a you know with a seven figure net worth, you know you're going to burn. You could theoretically burn through that money fairly quickly. Sure. So you want to figure out and look at it from a global perspective. How are you going to deal with with housing? Where are they going to be? 
um, or where are you going to be? Mm-hmm. And then who's going to take care of you and what level of care do you need? Yep. Um, that will also drive the cost. And then, of course, obviously, how do you pay for it? How do you rework your finances to pay for it? And then making sure that you've got all of your legal documentation in place to make sure that everything can, you know, can flow smoothly and that people can actually you know, take care of you and make decisions for you when you're not able to access your bank account, access your brokerage account, and things like that. Those are all very, very important components or else you know, you're going to have to spend a lot of money on a guardianship. Okay, but he- so here's a bigger question. I mean, if, this, if dementia you think is going to be the biggest problem mm-hmm. and dementia – Needs. I mean, it's really just your mind going. I mean, it right. sounds it sounds so much worse than it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not good, but it sounds like you know, demented has been such right. a poorly used word, probably. Yeah. Um, but there is, I mean, like I was saying, such an amount of time and so many people that would need this type of care. It would crush every, anybody financially. Right. Right. And that is that is of course the danger, and that's why uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people really aren't prepared. For, for what is coming, and they need to start thinking about doing things early uh, from a financial perspective, saving more, uh, maybe looking at uh, long-term care insurance if, if that's the right way to go, uh, different types of financial products, investing properly and whatnot. And, but, and that you would work with, certainly with a financial advisor and, and, and get competent advice there. But then also from the legal standpoint, you want to get your wills and your trusts in place so that you can protect what assets you do have so that you can still qualify uh, for, you know, say, baseline you know, public benefits if you need to mm-hmm. uh, and if you're really a candidate for that. But as we talked about just a moment ago, before you get to the will, let's look at what needs to be in place while you're alive so that, again, money can be accessed. And so if you're if your children are appointed under your power of attorney to act for you, you need to be able to know that, that they can actually go to the bank and use that power of attorney and that that'll work so they can access the money and, and pay for that care. Right. Or you know they can sell your home if that's the way to go and they have the legal ability to do that. And so you need to make sure that those documents are properly drafted and are comprehensive and are going to work. Uh, so there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle to make sure that everything kind of comes together. So when you, what type of documents are you talking about? Because we're really mm-hmm. talking about accessing money and being able to put it towards yourself. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that somewhere out there, there is somebody who's like, God, you know, mom and dad or mom's not doing so well. All this money that was going to come to me is now going to long-term mm-hmm. care. And I would mm-hmm. imagine there are people who have conflicts of like, you know, mom right. doesn't know what's going on. Right. And right. we're, you know, I mean, it's got to be mm-hmm. tough. Yeah, it does. And and that is presenting a, a, a lot of problems in a lot of different circumstances. Uh, the main documents that we're talking about to make sure that these things can actually work and, and a spouse or, or an adult child can assist and, and make sure that people are taken care of is the power of attorney. Um, now, with having a power of attorney comes a fiduciary duty to act on that person's best, you know, in that person's of best course. interest and on their behalf. And and I always try to build in you know checks and balances and whatnot so that uh, so that somebody else can sort of see what's going on because you're right I mean mom doesn't know what's going on so it's kind of not so hard to rob her blind for, right you know, for and, and not that I mean term. not that people w- I mean I imagine people would I mean there's no doubt well yeah there's people yeah. out there but um, you know imagine even if uh, if the directive of what to do isn't there it's still tough decisions. Right. Because it's okay. Well, are you going to the really nice place? Because mm-hmm. I mean, the cost, the difference in cost is like massive, right? Yes, it can be. Yeah, I mean, you can have places that are, say, three thousand dollars a month. You can have places that are, you know, eight or nine thousand dollars a month, or even more. So yes, there is a definite uh, disparity in terms of the cost and and uh, presumably the quality. And and that's another problem that people face as well. Is is what. You know what? Uh, where do you where do you put them? Do you do you pay up and and try to improve their quality of life? And so, part of what you'd want to do is is you want to be protecting the assets so that you can supplement any sort of baseline you know care that that you would get. So if you are uh, a candidate for Medicaid or for VA benefits, you would qualify and apply for those benefits and receive those benefits as a baseline. And of course, they're not going to pay for everything under the sun. So if you want a better situation. If you want more services, then you would have assets, usually in a trust in some form, that would enable you to, you know, to supplement that that care. Sure.